Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. Finally we have today the video about the GPS module. Recently the Rayx Technologies sent me this breakout board with the GPS module, and today I am going to show how to work with it. The video on the GPS will be covered in two parts. In this video I will use the board with the computer, and some software to get the GPS data. In the next video we will cover the interfacing with the SDM32 microcontroller. If you are using any other GPS module, like Neo 6M, you should also first connect it to the computer and see the results in the software yourself. The output from all the GPS modules is mostly the same, so interfacing them with the microcontroller won't be an issue. Let's see what this particular module offers. This board have the connection options for UART and I2C, and here we can choose what type of interface we want. As most of the GPS modules use UART, I am going to go with UART also, and this is why I have connected the headers towards the UART. The USB can be used to connect the module directly to the computer. Here is the GPS sensor, actually the Rayx uses the sensor from Sony. This here is the product description for the sensor. Like I said, it uses the Sony CXD5605 series, and it's a multi-GNSS receiver which can be used for GPS, GLONASS, BADO etc. It works with 1.8 volts, and here we have some current consumption table. This is the configuration for the I2C, and this for the UART. These are the GNSS center frequencies. The signal accuracy is 1 meter. Then we have the time for the cold start and hot start. Here are the documents you can download. I have already downloaded them, and we will go over each one of them. Here is the datasheet of the module. We have the block diagram, the pin description, the same data we saw earlier. All right here is the interesting thing, the software used for monitoring. Then we have some commands for different modes. We can use these commands from the serial monitor, but here we are going to use the software itself, so these are not needed. The software they have mentioned was very hard for me to find, but I found it somehow. I will post the link to it in the description, just in case if someone needs it. Here is how it looks like. Let's connect the module to the computer now. Here you can see it got detected as the USB to UART bridge. Next we will set up the serial port in the software. Port is 5, board rate is 115200, and then we have 81 and N. Everything is correct, so save this. Here we have the options for cold, warm or hot start. Let's go with hot start. After issuing the hot start command, the process starts within one second. The sensor will start displaying the values that are saved in its memory, until it gets a fix on the signal. This here shows the UTC time, and right now it just started from zero. Actually I have already set up the UTC time in the memory, so let's wait for it to read that one. Anyway we don't have a fix right now, so let's save the NME logs. We will compare these logs later with the ones, when we will get the fix. Click start to start the logs. Let's wait for 2-3 seconds, and click stop. 
On the right side here we can see the number of satellites, and their details. Here is the log we just saved. You can see the NME output from the sensor. This NME format is basically same for all the GPS modules. So let's say if you are using a Neo 6M, instead you can use their software for this test. The software representation might be different, but the NME output will be similar for all the modules. All right here you can see, it got the uptime correct now. We still don't have the fix, and that might be because I am still indoor. Let me take this outside. One more thing, in these logs, the GP stands for the GPS. Since I am only using the GPS mode, it's only searching for GPS satellites. If you change the mode to GLONASS or Hybrid, the output, that is GP, will also change to GN or GL. As this module does supports the hybrid mode, it can be used for getting the fix faster, as compared to using only one system. Alright we finally got the fix. Here we have the latitudes and longitudes. We also have the altitude from sea level. Let's start the logs after we got the fix. Now you can see the data in the logs. Let's see what these numbers actually stands for. It's explained in the software guide. Here we have the NME specifications. Let's see the RMC specifications first. First like I mentioned, GP stands for using GPS only. Next we have the UTC in hour, minutes and seconds format. It's 7 hours, 28 minutes and 44 seconds. Then we have the status, if the data is valid or not. Next is the latitudes. Here 30 is degrees, and 15.8564 in minutes. N stands for north. Then longitudes, 078 is degrees, and rest is minutes, and E stands for east. Then we have speed in knots, we have the course in degrees. Here is the speed, and this is the course. This is the date, which is 30th of January 2022. Basically the data from our MC is enough for the basic coordinates, and timekeeping. But if you need other data also, you can check out other outputs. For example, GGA, it also gives you the coordinates along with the time, and it also shows if the fix is valid or not. Here one indicates that we have a valid fix. Other information like, how many satellites are in use. In our case, it's 4. We have the mean sea level altitude. Here it is 592 meters. This software do gives us the access to some of the settings, like operating mode, NME settings, etc. In the NME setting, we can change which outputs we need. For example, if I just select these two, then then we still get the coordinates and other data, but not everything. Like the number of satellites, velocity, and some other data is missing too. If we log the output now, 
we can see that there are only two outputs available in the NMEA. So depending on the application, you can enable or disable NME outputs. I am sure these settings are also available in other software, so you can test them as per the module you are using. So we got the coordinates using the software, and we saw what kind of output does the module gives us. In the next video, I will interface it with the STM32 using the UART, where we will get these coordinates and probably display them on the LCD or something. The purchase links for the module I am using are in the description below. You can check them out if you are interested. This is it for this video. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Be safe, keep supporting, and have a nice day ahead.